funded more than a thousand plus businesses already. Ambition of having five unicorns, whatever the, the nonsense may be, you don't find enough funding now to help the early stage guys. There is a negative connotation because we have yeah. the term grant burners now. Yeah. And we have seen a lot of suspicious cases, right? Uh, and then you look at the business models, you're very sus. During the time that I was there, I knew I looked at easily more than a thousand plus business proposals coming in in the five years that I was there. How many of those do you think actually got funded? Uh, close programs? to about 20 percent. 20 percent. 20 percent, about 200 plus or so. And of course, today, you know, when you look at the history of Cradle, uh, they funded more than a thousand plus businesses already or startups already. It's pretty amazing because if you didn't have that as a funnel, it wouldn't lead to deal flows at the seed level, at the pre-series A levels, at IPO levels. If the nation wants to have that ambition of having five thousand startups and five unicorns whatever the, the nonsense may be. I can't remember which minister said that. Um, I think it was one of the uh, early whatever, blueprints. Yeah. Uh, I kind of feel stars. that is a bit unrealistic because I, as an executioner, the E, the operational guy, will say, what's your plan to create that? Because you don't find enough funding now to help the early stage guys. Mm. The majority of the I mean, that's always been my, my issue as well. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of entrepreneurship, early stage entrepreneurship. And I feel like we need a lot of funding at the very early stage. Not to say even just to fund the startups, but, you know, building the ecosystem itself at yeah. the grassroots level. I mean, we have that issue primarily because we, we always compare sickeningly against Silicon Valley. But you have to understand the culture of Silicon Valley is that there's a, a whole bunch of risk takers. It's a competitive landscape of risk takers. It's a pool of risk takers. We don't have that here. The majority of the people who are in in VC firms come from very conservative, risk adverse banking, financial, corporate finance, corporate investment type mindset. And so you don't have the kind of investors that have the entrepreneurial risk taking mindset. And that's why you don't see huge amounts of deal flow. All right, but when you talk about grants, right? Just want to get your thoughts, what you think about grants, mm. because there is a negative connotation because we have yeah. the term grant burners now. Yeah. But what do you think about grants? How do you think it benefits the ecosystem? And maybe your thoughts on when uh, startup entrepreneurs should actually start looking at grants at which stage. Maybe okay. you can share some thoughts on that. Grants can be a double-edged sword. For somebody who has been on both sides of the fence, say for example Sukasel, the business that I'm trying to build, the startup that I'm trying to roll out. I had my friends, my ex-colleagues in Cradle, my, my comrades in Cradle telling me, hey Joe, you should apply to Cradle. Get the grant. I strangely said no. Nicolonism, any? <laughs> no, I mean, at the end of the day, they're, they're looking, they're always looking for good ideas mm. and they know somebody, you and know. And they know that you're running this now. Yeah, they know somebody who is a seasoned entrepreneur will always come up with really yeah. good proposals, right? Uh, as opposed to some young guy who hasn't learned the ropes of being an entrepreneur, taking, you know, trying his luck to try and get a grant. Mm. Seasoned guys like me, ecosystem guys like me, we won't do something unless it was really, really worth doing. And so they know if I had something to, to do, it would be worth for them to look at, mm. right? And so they want that quality deal flow. And this is always a problem. We, we always look for quality deal flow. I mean, this is the expectations of the grant uh, agencies out there, regardless whether you're MTDC, Cradle, MDAC, whatever it is, we're always looking for quality deals. Unfortunately, you don't get that 100%. Like I gave you the ratio out of a thousand ideas that I saw in Cradle, only 20% got true. That but, means 80% was not. But do you think at the stage not. of grants, right? Mm. Do you think quality deal flow is really the most important thing? I yeah. Mean, because for investors, it's different, right? Obviously, you want the best uh, deal. You want to make yeah. your money worth. You want to make your 10x, 20x. But if let's say for a, a government initiative where your objective is purely to just create entrepreneurs, create startups, do you think it's really important to pick the best options or just spread the money around and just build the ecosystem? What do you, what do you think? It's best to pick the quality deals. You have to remember, this money, it's public money. It's the rakyat's money. Technically, you're guardians of, of that money, the sacred guardians. And we have to be accountable for every ringgit, every cent, every decision we make because that's going to be audited by Jabatan Audit Negara and whatever agencies that are involved, ministries that's going to be given that those budgets to, to disperse. It's a responsibility for you to pick quality deals rather than just simply throwing money around. What it leads to is the opportunities that it creates, the entrepreneurs that ends up creating jobs, creating value, creating taxation down the road, creating supply chain, uh, and multiply, multiplier effect to the economy. That's how the business model is for grants. A lot of people don't see this. They, they just think, oh, the government is has a grant. We are entrepreneurs. We have to get it and we deserve to get it. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Sorry to burst that bubble because it's a whole economy. You know, in order for the country or the government to continue to give money down the road to another deserving entrepreneur, mm. there has to be 
an ROI. Where does that ROI from giving free money come from? The grant is like an investment. We take that risk and so we have to evaluate which has a higher chance of performing and giving an ROI as opposed to the ones that are way too risky and we say no. That's how you get approvals and rejections. And so the ones that we th- take the bets on, we expect those companies to grow because it will then create jobs and it will then create trickling of economy and you have circulation of money and that leads to economic wealth. And but, but having said that, right, we yeah. have to keep this real a bit. Yeah. Generally speaking, not just uh, not just talking yeah. about Cradle here, right? Generally, I mean, in we general, like yeah. 60 over government mm. agencies uh, looking at entrepreneurship in Malaysia. Yeah. Many of them have grant programs. And we have seen a lot of suspicious cases, right? Yeah, of uh, course. A lot of companies in Malaysia have gotten grants, which is also adds to that negative yeah, connotation, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then you look at the business models, you look at the business, very sus. What, what do you think about that? You know, I, I can't speak for the, the other people evaluating stuff hmm. or, or the proposals or the applications that come in. Everybody has their own, you know, KPI, uh, their own mandate, their own methods of evaluating what is approved and what's not. If you understand any grant uh, agency out there, there's accountability and you sort of have better corporate governance with multiple layers of check and balance. And so you have the evaluation committee, you have the investment committee, you know, you have the industry committees and stuff like that to evaluate all these things. And, you know, there may be some suspicious applicants who have gotten questionable grants, maybe out of under table money, corruption, whatever it is. But or it could be, you know, just because you know someone or you know they could yeah, be yeah, cable, yeah. friend, you know, pulling cables and stuff like that. Uh, but those cases still are a minority compared to the majority of those who do deserve those. But grants. honestly nowadays I don't hear it so much. I yeah. think maybe about ten years ago, you know, yeah. in the early days when grants were just introduced, everyone got excited, maybe found ways to get them. But I think in the last few years uh, grant agencies have become more strict. Yeah. I think they have, like you said, right, better governance. And I think Cradle led the way for that uh, mm. in, in so many ways because there was so many innovative stuff about Cradle, including its governance. Yeah. Just fun fact, right? As an analyst, I don't see who's applying. Mm. I only get the portion of the application, which is just the business plan. So it's kind of like a tender evaluation process. Yeah, I'm, I'm blinded. And it's a double blind. Uh, there's two analysts working on any application and I can't see what the ad- other analyst thinks. Mm-hmm. And that analyst doesn't know what I think. All right. And so we are so judging. Two independent yes, evaluation, two, in, two right. independent evaluation. And we don't see who's the applicant. Mm. The applicant details are hidden from, from our dashboard. You, you talk about fairness, you talk about you know cronism or corruption. Mm. In the 20 years that Cradles existed, I don't think anybody can actually say there has been a case where there was corruption involved. Hmm. And that's a testament to its... And they've kind of improved that process yeah, as well? Yeah, of course. To make it Over better. the years, they've, they've always uh, you know, improved that. And, and you're part of that conversation. At the end of the day, right? Tax, like you said, tax pays money. Yeah, Including you know. myself as a tax paying citizen, I want that money to be yes. put to good use, right? I mean, I don't have an issue with government giving free money yeah. to entrepreneurs, but I want it to go to deserving uh, entrepreneurs and I want that money to be put I to I good think use. I'm happy to pay more tax. Yeah. Even, even to an extent, if you understand you know, how the grant agency works, Cradle is not a small organization today. Uh, we were probably like a 10, 12 member team when it started. Now it's grown to easily over 50, 60 people, uh, probably more, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It's salaries being paid. The grant money doesn't cover operational cost of paying those salaries yep. and so there had to be a unit so that was set up spend more money to run the organization no you itself, don't right? yeah, yeah. You, and mm. we're not getting a budget from mm. mof from that for right. that uh you, you have to understand that cradle has to generate its own revenues so there had oh, to be okay. a chief revenue officer at one point in order for cradle to be a self-sustaining agency Okay, so it's not like an agency that's just purely no. funded by the government? No, it, it just mm. works like a venture capital firm, right? You okay. get a certain percentage, 2 to 3% as management fee. Cradle, you know, it's similar in that sense. There is a percentage that's allocated for operational purposes and so how long you have were to you stay then, with it. You know, like, and why for you about, what's the story? Yeah, for about five years. Cradle started 2003. I came in 2004. Juliana, who's still there, <laughs> really enough, came in just a month after I did mm. in 2004. Uh, she's still there now today, till today. Nazrin came, ba- came in again temporarily in 2005. 2007, he came back as CEO of Cradle. And so what happened there was in that whole hiatus or suspension that Cradle had, Nazrin lobbied MOF for the separation of Cradle from MAFCAP. I lobbied Dato Husni. 
because of our old friendship. Mm -hmm. And he understood why Cradle had to be independent from MEFCAP, you know, mm -hmm. because we were a grant and MEFCAP was a VC, a government backed VC. And so, you know, we could f still funnel to each other without being tied to each other. In order for us to, to, to sort of help more and do more, we need to be independent uh, of MathCap in that sense. So I worked the inside, Nazrin worked the outside, and Cradle eventually became separated 2007, four years after its formation. Cradle Fund was established. I stayed on till 2009. Nazrin, you know, needed my help for the handover because at that point in time, I became synonymous with the brand. We were always going out in public, giving talks, and, you know, I became the face of Cradle. And then Nazrin came in and became the replacement face in that sense, right? And he still, you know, he was never really an operational guy. He still needed myself and Raiz at that point in time to hold the fort and keep things running as it was while he did the work on expanding Cradle's influence and reach and scope right. uh, with the government people 